Joining me now, Mark Thiessen, American Enterprise Institute scholar and former chief speechwriter for President George W. Bush. He's also a Fox News contributor. And Benjamin Collins, former Special Forces officer. Gentlemen, welcome. Uh, good to have you, Martha. both Thank of you, you um, with us tonight. You know, looking back, obviously, this is a problem that has been around for a long time. A lot of leaders have tried to deal with Assad and his dictatorship and his brutality. Um, but now this is on President Trump's desk, and he does have to make a decision, as he mentioned there, Mark. What decision do you think that should be? Well, he did. He's right that he did inherit this problem because what happened was Barack Obama drew a red line in the sand and said that we will not tolerate the use of chemical weapons and didn't enforce it. So when Donald Trump came into office and Assad crossed that red line again, he didn't wring his hands. He acted decisively and he struck uh, the Syrian regime and punished them. And it was important, not just, be, not just from a humanitarian standpoint, because we should not tolerate the use of chemical weapons, but because it restored American credibility on the world stage that Barack Obama had squandered. It sent a message to the world that that the era of Obama, Obama era of weakness is over and America is willing to act again. So that worked for a little while. It was a measured proportionate response and it worked for a little while, but now Assad has defied us again. So American credibility is on the world stage right now, is on the, uh, is on the line right now, and it's not just Syria. It's North Korea. North Korea is watching what Donald Trump does here in, in, in response to this crisis because he's going into a big summit with Kim Jong-un soon, and the only way that summit works is if, Do if Kim Jong-un believes that he's willing to take military action to take out his ballistic missiles and, and nuclear program if, if he doesn't do it voluntarily. And if he's not willing to do that in Syria, uh, then Kim Jong-un is not going to believe that the American threat of force is credible. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I think is so important in this moment is whether or not the president can rally allies to support this decision. And Ben, we all remember that was one of the things that President Obama leaned back on. He said, I can't get the support from France right now. I'm not getting the support that we need from our allies. So that's why we can't act. Um, Theresa May putting out a statement just a short time ago saying that she and President Trump have spoken about it and that they see clearly that there's a pattern of behavior here from Syria that includes chemical weapons and that that is of great concern. Do you think the president can get support from our allies on this? Uh, I, I certainly do, Martha, and I think he should be able to get support uh, because it speaks just more to not just our credibility, but I would say the international community's credibility mm -hmm. overall. Uh, I mean, in 1997, the, you know, they created the Organization for the Protection uh, or the Prevention of Chemical Weapons Use. 192 countries signed that. You know, the strike that occurred last year um, is, is very different than the one that, that we're contemplating right now. The fact is that that strike was, was meant as a deterrent. It was a very pinpointed strike. It hit the air base that the, uh, the, the air platforms had taken off. But in a year's time, that deterrent did not work. So from, from there to now, you know, mm -hmm. my question is, where are the other 191 countries, number one? Number two, this strike can't just be seen as a deterrent. We gave Assad the choice to make a decision whether or not to use chemical weapons again. We, we can't allow that anymore. We have to go in and destroy his ability uh, to, to utilize chemical weapons, how to deliver them, how to create them, where to store them, et cetera. So this has to be a decisive point right now. Yeah. Uh, Lindsey Graham, Mark, is, is saying you have to take out Assad and the circle around him, that he should be considered a war criminal and essentially fair game in, in any sort of strike attack. Uh, that, that is um, that's a strong statement. What do you think? I agree with Lindsay that uh, that Assad is a legitimate war a target, uh, but I think what we really need to do is we need to do this through the prism of looking at North Korea. So what we wanted, what the president wants to do, is to do a demonstration effect for the North Korean regime of what will happen to them if they don't if they don't stop their nuclear and ballistic but, but missile Mark, program. But Mark, if I may, so, I mean, it, it, I understand what you're saying, yeah. and it will certainly reflect on that decision. But it is a decision in and of itself that that brings us into something that we can't simply walk away from after. As no, well. I understand that. But what, I, what I'm saying is I agree, I agree with Ben and I agree with General Jack Keane, who was on your show the other night, mm -hmm. that what we need to do is we need to do a not a limited pinprick strike, not a bloody nose strike, but something that's substantive that takes away his chemical weapons capability. We have to take out the airfields. We have to take out the munitions. We have to take out the artillery that he uses to deliver those weapons. But I would not take out the regime because what the message you want to send to North Korea is we are we are willing to take a limited strike that's not going to lead to a global uh, to a to a massive war between our countries. We should hold it in pact and say to Assad, if you do retaliate against us, if we take, when we take, the, we take this action, we're coming after you. And it's the same message we want to send to Kim Jong-un. Quick thought, Ben. 
Yeah, I, I agree. And, and I mean, the fact is what we always have to contemplate, especially in this environment, is you've got two nation states, Russia and Iran, that have propped up Assad. And, and those two are going to be making their own determinations in the next couple of days yeah. uh, as to how they're going to respond. Uh, they're probably getting their, their own people ready. Uh, but I, I think that they've got a lot more to lose than we do. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Great to see both of you tonight. Thanks, Martha. Thanks, Martha.